Uh, hi, welcome back to my project. This is the last video of the making the camera shutter app with BLE HID. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna touch the Bluetooth LED part only. So if you need a way of preparing to draw UI, please check out the previous videos. Uh, this is my selfie stick and it has a remote controller. I can remotely trigger my smartphone to take a picture after pairing. Uh, it connects the BLE including the HID profile. You can see that a volume up button is pressed by pressing the button in the remote controller. On our smartphone, the volume up key is typically assigned as a key to trigger pictures on the built-in camera app. So if our system can deliver the same volume up key to the smartphone, it can be a remote controller for taking pictures. Cool. Okay then, let's complete the project. Uh, the first thing we need is to add necessary files to run the BLE. Actually, the ESP IDF tool has very useful examples a lot. Uh, it's going to be very exciting if you browse them. Also, I'm going to use the official example from them for BLE HID. Let's bring them all into the project. Uh, go to the folder where the ESP IDF installed. Then, examples, Bluetooth, uh, BlueDroid, a BLE, a BLE HID device demo, and main folder. Uh, here we are. You can see a couple of source code files and header files are here. Uh, I will bring the rest of the files except the demo main C file into my project. Uh, I'm gonna open and paste the current main folder of my project. The copy is done. Go back to the VS Code. Uh, I see the files. Uh, before building this project, uh, let's check the CMAGRIS file. Uh, we need to add the header files here. Two files, HID device array uh, preference and ESP HIDD preference API added automatically. But this is not enough. We should need more, but let me build first. Uh, the reason why I try to build first is to check if the Bluetooth-related headers in the project work properly. I will open the file blehidd demo main file that I didn't copy earlier and bring the required header part. Uh, basically, not only the parts you need to run the ESP32 but also the headers you need for Bluetooth are defined. Uh, they are headers of free RTOS, ESP basic system, and Bluetooth we added earlier. I think it's just time to check we are ready to use the Bluetooth module in this project. Uh, let me build it. Uh, for the first build, it's hard to succeed always, right? It says ESPBT is missing. The ESPBT is the default module so cannot be missing. Uh, in ESPIDF's default SDK config, uh, Bluetooth is not set to default so you have to enable this part to get it. Uh, let me open the terminal and the menu config. Uh, I'm gonna just enable the Bluetooth and leave all the rest as default values. Okay, let's build and check what the next problem is. Uh, this error says some warnings being treated as errors. We need to fix them from the CMAGRIS file. Uh, add the C files as a component needed for Bluetooth and finally add the compile option. This will now mark the warning as an error anymore. Okay, let's try again. Finally, there is build successfully, yes. Uh, it means we are ready to use Bluetooth module in this project. Let's go to the next step. Uh, let's briefly talk about the Bluetooth stack. The Bluetooth protocol stack is divided into two categories, the controller and the host. Each category has a subcategories which perform specific roles. The two subcategories we are going to glance at are the generic access profile which is GAP and the generic attribute profile which is GET. Uh, the only reason to have intimate knowledge of anything beneath these layers is if you are a stack developer. Uh, if this is the case, I recommend reading the core Bluetooth spec. The gap layer takes care of various control functions. Uh, 
Things like security, uh, connection management, and advertising are all part of the gap layer. Uh, BLE operates in two basic states, advertising and connected. If you look at the BLE spec, there are actually a bunch of sub modes with special names for every case, something like uh, broadcaster, initiator, advertiser, uh, but in general, all cases fall into these two states. In advertising mode, the advertiser broadcasts data out to any scanner that is listening, uh, sometimes with the intent to connect, sometimes with no intention of forming a connection. Uh, there is no guarantee of data being transferred. It's simply broadcast out for anyone to find. Uh, this is a one-to-many transfer. The advertising mode used the gap layer of the BRD stack. Uh, let's take a look at the get layer. The get layer takes care of the data exchange and data organization. The get layer used the attribute protocol as a transport for data exchanges between devices. In connected mode, two BRD devices are directly connected. In the connection, a server serves data to client. The terms client and server are used to express the directional flow of the data and as such, both devices will be clients and servers during a two-way flow of information. During a connected information transfer, data is guaranteed to be sent and is verified with checksum. This is a one-to-one -one transfer. The connected mode uses the get layer of the BRD stack. Uh, because this project uses both this gap and get, I first briefly explained it. Uh, all the source code I'm going to use is from the example. If you need more details, please take a look at them one by one. It's going to be very helpful to get deep dive into BLE. OK, let's complete this project. I will explain by pasting my pre-written code. Uh, the project tag is for printing out the message with this tag in the console. The HIDD device name is for the advertising name when other devices like smartphone are looking at this device. You can check the advertising name on the mobile screen. Uh, it's the human interface device service UID which has 0x12 and 1.8. This is the generic value for HIDs. Uh, depending on your project, you can change these two values. The HID con ID will be updated with the connected device ID. The set con is the bool variable for connected or disconnected. Just added two data type structure here. A ESP BLE advertised data type and ESP BLE advertised parameter type. As the name suggests, it's all about the advertising. The first one is the setting. If the HID initialize is complete normally, set the BLE gap with this setting. And the second one is for advertising parameters. A BLE gap uses these parameters when starting an advertisement. Uh, this time, I brought two callback functions, a gap event callback and HIDD event callback. Uh, in HIDD event callback, you can see that common callback is defined. Uh, such as BLE connect, disconnect, and so on. Uh, one interesting thing is that a uh, BLE disconnect make the variable set count first when it's a disconnect, but the part where the BLE is checked for connection is in the gap event handler. The reason is that the device must be authenticated by the user when connecting HID equipment from the smartphone. Once it's done, the set count can be true. Also, you can see the function call to update the status label of the LVGR object in each situation, but not all of them. Uh, next is BLE main part. Here, what we will do is initializing all parts of BLE. As I mentioned before, all source code for BLE HID is from the official example project, which is BLE HID demo. Uh, take a look at that again if you need it. Uh, the first thing to initialize is NVS flash memory. You can put data as key value pair. Uh, I don't know why, but without this, the BT module is not working properly. So I recommend keeping it in this way. In line number two or three, uh, it's trying to release the memory of ESP classic Bluetooth. This is because we are using BLE, not a classic Bluetooth, so it's to gain the unused memory. Initialize the Bluetooth controller. 
The configuration here contains the contents of the menu config. After that, enable the ESP Bluetooth BLE in line number 213. ESP IDF currently supports two host stacks. Uh, by default, the BlueDroid base stack uh, supports classic Bluetooth as well as BLE. Uh, on the other hand, Apache Nimble uh, NIMBLE base stack is BLE only. Uh, after initializing and enabling a uh, blue droid, the BLE is ready for use. Uh, to use BLE as HID, you need to initialize the HID profile. Uh, here I updated the status label with BLE in it done, and then registered two callback functions which are already added. Uh, finally, the ESP32 requires a series of security parameters to define how the parent request and response are going to be built. Uh, this information is enough for the BLD stack to perform the pairing process, uh, including pairing confirmation and key generation. Uh, the procedure is invisible to the user and executed automatically by the stack. Add this BLD HID init function in the main. Uh, we are ready to use BLD. Uh, from now on, uh, when the user presses the shop button, the volume up key must be passed through the BLE. It's very simple. Uh, move to the function shot trigger. Uh, before sending something into BLE, we must check the current connection first. If it's not connected yet, we don't need to send it. Uh, using the function ESPHID descend consumer value, uh, we can send the key value to pair device. Uh, HID con ID is the connected device ID. HID consumer value up key is defined. The last parameter is the bool variable. Uh, imagine the keyboard we are using. All keys have two states, uh, pressed and released. So this function performs like that. Uh, the next one is triggering from the timer. We have completed the timer part from the previous video. All we need to is sending the volume up key when time is up. We have both two states here with the delay. It's like the shop button is pressed and released by the user. Uh, this was the last part of the whole application. Let's build and check the result. Let's try one test. Uh, when it's pairing, what if cancel the Bluetooth pairing request? Uh, as you can see the status label, the authentication is failed. Uh, the gap event handle callback function works well. Uh, let's pair normally. Uh, you can see that it's all connected properly on the smartphone and ESP32. Uh, press the shop button to act as if the volume of key on the smartphone is pressed. Uh, it's working. Press and hold to keep the press. Uh, it was an iPhone before and it's an Android phone this time. Likewise, if you press the shop button, you can see the volume going up. Uh, one difference is that if we press it for a long time, it's going to be filmed on the iPhone, but it's going to be a burst shot on the Android phone. It depends on how it handles in the operating system. I made a simple remote controller for smartphone using the BLE HID of ESP32. I think we can use this project to complete a more interesting project. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next project.